Learn about the strides female entrepreneurs of color are making. Be inspired by their story and enlightened by their leadership insight and advice. Welcome back to another episode of When Hers United, the podcast. I'm your host, Nicole Walker, and I truly appreciate you listening in. This is Season 8, Episode 2, entitled, Wellness Has Many Dimensions, with Trinette Larva. Before we jump into the interview, I want to tell you more about me and When Hers United, the podcast. I believe that success leaves clues, and When Hers United, the podcast was created to give you the clues you need to succeed in business, mindset, personal development, and self-care. These are the four pillars we stand on here at When Hers United, which is why we emphasize these concepts and topics so much. We want you to live a complete and fulfilled life, both personally and professionally. And we believe that these four pillars will help you do so. If it's not too much to ask, please go to Apple Podcasts and give us a five-star rating. Then write us a review. As a thank you, I'll be giving shout outs on future episodes to those that take a moment to do this. So without further ado, Let's get into Season 8, Episode 2, entitled, Wellness Has Many Dimensions, with Trinette Larva. Okay, welcome to another episode of When Hers United, the podcast. You know, we are all about success and giving you the clues you need to be successful. Today, I have another amazing winner here to share her insight and advice with us. We have the honor of speaking with Trinette Larva. Trinette is known as the Curvy Fit RN, and she's the CEO of Curvy Fit Chick. Trinette is all about wellness and working out. And in addition to running Curvy Fit Chicks, Trinette is also a postpartum doula. The Bonwell Foundation nominated Trinette for the RISE Award in 2019 and the SOAR Award in 2021. And if that wasn't enough, Trinette also in her free time loves travel. So, you know, we are kindred spirits because I love travel as well. Trinette, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so very much for this invitation. I'm honored. You're welcome. Yay. All right. Now let's get right into it. So let's talk business. Let's start off by you letting us know what being a curvy fit chick means and how you help your curvy fit chick clients. All right. So that's a very good question. So what curvy fit chicks means is that means, honey, you are approaching a curvy warrior. This is a curvy athlete. She is disciplined. She is self-aware. This is a woman that does not just talk the talk, but she walks that talk. This is her lifestyle of living completely holistic, well, and whole. The curvy fit chick is the woman that is proof that You don't have to live up to societal norms, nor do you have to live up to their restrictions, honey, because you are (laughs) the curvy and fit chick, okay? You are living proof that they do coexist. That is a curvy fit chick. And how do I help my clients, my peoples, my family? I help them in many different ways, right? So one of the ways I help them is I help them to rediscover and to understand themselves, right? Because one of the things about Curvy Fit Chicks is that we are all about self-mastery. So it is all about you going inward because within you are the answers. And so I explain that a lot of times to my client because many people have been programmed in this society that they have to come to people for 
all of the answers. And what I do is I provide an environment of clarity. I help to remove clutter out of their mind. And you ask, what is the clutter? The clutter is all of the indoctrination of the program that they have been dealing with their entire lives, all of the stories and narratives and lies that they have been told. And I am helping them to seek and understand that which who they are authentically and what is their truth. What mm. is the truth? Um, mm. And so I take mm. them on that journey within themselves. That is what I do. I help them to love themselves. I help them to find forgiveness within themselves. I help them to accept who they are, to appreciate their bodies. And I help them to really be able to be confident and unapologetic about who they are, what they represent, and what they do, and do it boldly. Okay. Mm. Okay. Look, we could end the interview right now, honey. That was everything. <laughs> All right. I love that. That was a very in depth explanation. And I think it's amazing, right? Because when you hear curvy fit chicks, you may just think of workout, right? But I love how you're covering the whole embodiment of women, you know, and not just leaving it at workout. So as I was listening, you said something that really stuck out to me as far as societal norms, right? Because in society, I feel like from my understanding, right, I'm only going to speak for me, that Mm -hmm. to be fit, you have to be a certain size. What's your view as far as size in relation to fitness? Well, madam, okay, look. (laughs) (laughs) You know, people make a lot of assumptions when they see me because in their mind, you know, they feel that healthiness and fitness is supposed to be on a smaller frame and body and mistake a lot of times that at my size that I am fit. But I am extremely fit. Like I said, I am an athlete and I embody this thing. And so you can be as healthy and fit as you want to be where you are. It is really Mm. up to you. I really think people kind of confuse the real meaning of exercise and simply equate exercise and fitness with a person who wants to be a certain weight. Mm. You know, so that limits their ability to think outside of that box and understand that even in a larger body that you can be fit. Okay. I have put a many people to shame. (laughs) Okay. You know, don't start it and it won't be. Okay. So (laughs) no, you cannot make assumptions about a size and how fit that person is. I love that. I love that. So breaking those societal norms and the view on that. So ladies, regardless of your size, that doesn't mean that you can't be fit, right? So don't let size stop you or make you feel like you're less than. Love it. All right. So let's go into one of your other mini hats, right? Because I feel like as women, we all have mini hats. So we spoke of two of yours in the intro. So in addition to running curvy fit chicks, you're also a postpartum doula. Tell us what made you want to become a postpartum doula and also tell us what are the requirements for becoming a postpartum doula for anyone listening that may be interested in that field. Absolutely. So what made me become a postpartum doula? I actually feel that it was a part of my calling. So Curry Fit Chicks is a part of that. Being a postpartum doula is also a part of that because my overall mission is to bring healing, hope, and health to women. Mm. Okay. Mm. And so then it, it comes in different forms. So being a postpartum doula, it's like a soul calling to me. It is something that I have. I didn't know the word doula, but actually it goes back to when I began my menstruation. Uh, when I began my menstruation back in sixth grade, I became extremely fascinated with learning the female anatomy inside and out. I wanted to know everything about it. And I read voraciously. (laughs) I lived at the library. I read a lot of books. Trust me. I was the health educator unofficial Mm. uh, (laughs) for my classmates. (laughs) And so in middle school, I had decided that I was going to become an obstetrician. And by the time I graduated high school, I still had that. Went to a conference and everything to learn more about what an OB does. 
got to see deliveries, et cetera, et cetera. When I got to college, I was on the path until Organic Chem 2 had a different conversation with me. And so I said, okay, midwifery it will be. So midwifery is what I... (laughs) No, but honestly, it was deeper than that, right? So I found that, because I also used to do a lot of volunteer work through the College of Public Health, as well as through different programs with Healthy Mothers, Healthy Babies, with the Bridge the Gap program. So I did a lot in, in women's health from a young time. And so I found that when I met midwives, it just felt right. It felt like that was what I wanted to do. I love, 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 love connecting with people. I love connecting with people. And I find that midwives are just to me have a deeper relationship with their clients and you're with them along the spectrum. And OB is just with you, you know, till you have your child. But the midwife is throughout the woman's life spectrum. And that's what I wanted. But it didn't work out that way for me, right? Um, I was supposed to go to nursing school when I graduated, but life happened. And so I was heartbroken about that. And I thought that it was a dream denied, but it was actually a dream deferred. And it actually came right on time. I mean, I couldn't have planned this better had I tried. The opportunity presented itself like everything just aligned. And when I got the call to take the training to become a postpartum doula, I am telling you, I almost bust out in tears because it clicked in my mind. It was just like all down in my soul that this is it, that this is time. And that the reason why it didn't happen at that time was I was not ready for the call. I wasn't ready fully for that mission, right? I needed to have some life experiences. I really needed to discover and learn about myself, about life, to be able to bring more to the table, to be able to deposit, to be able to share and give from a place of overflow and not from a place of drain and overwhelmed. You know, I've developed healthy boundaries. I understand things better. And so the person that I am today carrying this torch and being able to give to these women after they have given birth and not just seeing them as just mother, but the mothers, but these are legacy producers. These are builders. These are nurturers. And so my work is not just for these women. My work is to impact the generations that are coming from them. And so I really want to leave an impact, you know, and I want them to know that they have the power, that they can live healthy lives as mothers, and that they can do and correct and reprogram so that they can go out in life and touch other lives and start within their own household. But they really have to start Mm. within themselves. And so I am able to give that to them. And this is really just a part of my soul work. That's that's, So that's why I had to become a doula. And it's great because I'm not just a doula, I'm a nurse doula, right? You know, so that's always coming to the table Um, I'm I'm so glad I had that experience and knowledge beforehand. So as you were talking though, I'm listening and I'm like, well, you said, I didn't know what a doula was. And I'm like, well, do I actually know what a doula is? So is a doula a midwife? No. So a doula is not a midwife. So a midwife is either a nurse practitioner. So it's a nurse that got advanced an advanced degree, or you can become a licensed midwife within your state. Mm -hmm. And so they can practice and deliver babies within that state. Okay. Okay, So that's a midwife. So I am a doula. The doula is the support personnel, right? So you're supporting the team, right? But you are a direct support to the family. Okay. I like that. Right. So, right. So you are direct support to the family. I try to explain to people, it's more of an an entry into birth work. So it is a lot of support. It is teaching. It is empowering the parents. It is understanding. It is a lot of, a lot of that, right? So 
a lot mm. of accountability, et cetera, et cetera. So that's what a doula does, functions in that role. And then the requirements for yes. becoming a doula? Yes. So the requirements to becoming a doula really depends on who you choose to do your doula training with, right? So there's there's a labor doula, there's a postpartum doula. I am a postpartum doula because I love dealing with them once the baby is here. <laughs> so depending on where you're coming in from, because I'm already a registered nurse, I did not need all of the training that other people would need if they're just coming in, right? Because you can start this as an 18-year-old and mm-hmm. take the course. So okay. there are online courses. Uh, there are 16-hour training courses as well, which you can get a certificate. There are also those who do hybrids. There are those who have other requirements like taking childbirth education courses, you know, so taking at least eight or 16 hours of education, childbirth education, so you will understand that. Also adding on the breastfeeding component, so you want to get some education in breastfeeding, that's a service that you will also be offering to your particular families. Things that I also recommend is making sure that you have your CPR license, right? So because you never know what will happen at any given time. So you Mm want to be prepared as much as you can. So make sure you have your CPR, make sure that you are staying abreast and up to date with information, right? So you want to make sure that you're constantly reading. One of the books that I read that I recommend, and it's called Rediscovering Birth. And it's by Sheila Kitzinger. It's a really, really good book. It talks about you know, the birth process in different countries and kind of takes you through the history of that. And you have to think about the things that you are passionate about. Who is your target audience when you are providing these postpartum doula services? What are the things that are important to them? What are those causes that are important to you? What do you want to bring to the table? And take some CEUs in those particular topics, you know, and shadow, right? So you want to shadow experienced postpartum doulas, Or you might want to intern and volunteer some time at the birth houses, right? So a lot of midwives have birth houses where, uh, you know, their clients give birth and usually they'll have a team. But if you want to intern, it's this is new for you. You've never done that. Maybe you've never worked with families and you want to really kind of get an understanding because when you're working one to one with families, you know, you got to understand communication skill. You got to be a very good active listener. You need to be able to decipher not just what is needed, you know, what's wanted and how to really fuse a lot of different personalities. And so you really need to work on those skills as well. So I would recommend if that's if it's an introduction to you that you would intern as well. Okay. Look, you got my mind going. We're going totally off the script, guys. Okay. Uh, my, my mind is going. So is a doula necessary? Like, is that something people have in hospitals or is that more for people that are like birthing at home or in a birth center? So the doula can go wherever you decide you want your doula to go. Okay. Right. So the family, the family hires the doula. Okay. Okay. Uh-huh. So, so they go wherever, wherever okay. you decide. Wherever you decide that you've given birth, that's where they go. All right. And you said an acronym, and we want to make sure that everyone is on the same page, right? So CEUs are Continuing Education Units, right? Yes. Continuing Education Units. And that's used when you have certain certifications or trainings that you have to continue to learn so that people know you still know this particular skill or trade, right? So just making sure we shed some light on that. So as I was listening to you, you said something that really stuck out to me. And I've heard this in the past. And you said two things I actually want to touch on. So one is like, okay, when you were younger, you wanted to go into obstetrics, right? And you, this was your thing and you went along your path. And then in college, you took a class that changed your mind, but it also led you into wanting to become a doula. Right. So I think that that's something that definitely should be highlighted. Right. Like sometimes what we originally want, you know, once we do that exploration and discovery, we may change our minds. Right. And it's okay, Right. But getting 
onto that path, you know, takes you having to follow that initial spark, so to say, to really discover where you want to be and what you want to do, right? So I love, you know, how you illustrated that. You also reminded me of one of the previous episodes of the podcast with Dr. Sharon Porter, and -hmm. I believe it was even entitled Deferred is Not Denied, right? Mm -hmm. If I'm not mistaken, it may be a remix, but you know, saying how you wanted to go into being a doula, but you didn't do it right after college or during college, right? It was years later that it actually happened. So I love that too, that, you know, it may not manifest when we want it to, but that doesn't mean that it's not going to manifest, especially if that's something that's still in your heart. You know, you can go back to those original dreams and make them a reality. So don't feel like, oh, you know, society, oh, by the time I'm 30, I need to have X, Y, Z, all these check marks. And then if the check marks aren't checked, I'm a failure. No, you're not, right? If you really want to check those check marks, I don't care if you're 65, 70, go check those check marks, right? So I think that that was amazing as well. I definitely agree. I was one of those people, right? So if you <laughs> if you met me back in the day, like even in high school, like I had up the list. <laughs> I had I had a list on my wall and so I was I knew where I was going to school I knew what I would be doing by the age of 22 and 25 and 30 and 32 I had everything written out wow and so when it did not work out that way I was devastated right I was devastated but I'm I'm very glad that it did not work out that it didn't work out that way cuz there was a lot of learning And who's to say, you think you know, but do you really? Right, right. And then the pressure that we put on ourselves. You Mm, know, mm. let's let's take some of this pressure off. Trinette has been following the podcast for some time now, right? So she, I think, put wind of the podcast via LinkedIn, you know, and she happened to jump in my DMs one day, you know, connecting with me, telling me how great of a job I was doing. And I really appreciated her message, right? I'm the kind of person that I may not reach out to you, but if you reach out to me, I'm going to engage in conversation with you. I don't like to ignore people or anything like that, right? You know, and Trina and I have actually become business besties and our relationship has really grown, right? But just talking on, like, I know it's important for Trinette to nurture relationships, right? Relationship building, the fact that she jumped in my DM, you know, and and made it her business to reach out and want to have a conversation, to want to let me know that she's paying attention and she sees me, right? That that's a skill and that is necessary in business. So I, you know, give all kudos to Trinette for that. I actually admire her in relation to that, right? Because, you know, it's something that I need to work on, right? So all of that was my big introduction to Trinette telling us more of why relationship building is so important in business and giving us some relationship building tips and tricks. Okay. So business is all about relationships. It is all about relationships. I don't care what anybody says, I know even though we're we're doing a lot of online marketing, online business, it does not matter. Relationships matter. Okay. People want to know that they're getting the real you and that you actually care about them. Mm. Right. And it is them believing that you care about them and you really want to solve their problem that gets them to make the purchase, right? That gets them to buy. And so you have to nurture those relationships, right? So you got to first seek them out, right? So we call that what lead generation, right? So you, you got to seek out those who would be perfect to have a relationship with. Mm-hmm. Um, and then once you have made the connection, then you have to nurture the connection with those people. And one of the ways that you can do that is acknowledging, you know, acknowledge people, you know, greet people, right? Mm-hmm. Mm. greet them. So whether in person or online, you have to remember that people want to be seen. Acknowledge them and let them know that I see you, you matter to me, you know, I care about you. And it needs to be true, right? It really <laughs> <laughs> that part, that part now, that part, okay. People can smell It pain. needs to be true. One of the things that I'm very, very appreciative of 
is that I, I'm very genuine. Mm-hmm. And that is something that you will hear from people who know me or people who are in my community. They just, they say things like, you know, they can feel it even on a live because mm-hmm. what I say, I believe. Right. Right? And I do honestly want the best for people. I do. And so it comes across. And so when it, for me to nurture a relationship, I'm acknowledging you. I'm listening. Mm. I listen very intently in conversation. I pay attention to what a person is posting. That tells me a lot about what they value, what their beliefs are, right? So I'm paying attention. I am giving applause to their wins, right? I am responding. I am jumping in the DM. And I'm saying, hey, girl, what's going on? I see you out there. You're doing your thing. You're shining. Keep on shining. You're glowing. I love it. I saw the collaboration that you did. I thought you did a swell job, right? I'm going to say that. And I mean it, right? right? Whether they respond back or not, it is a way to, I touch bases with people. Mm. I follow up. I'm asking you about your children. I'm asking you about the last project. I'm asking you about the goals that you had. And Nicole can tell you about that. Oh, my if goodness. You tell- <laughs> when, Lord, you know, you know, sometimes you got to be careful what you tell Trinette now because she's going to keep you accountable. If you it say that help. you have goals, I want to see you achieve those goals. What can I do to help you achieve those goals? Because your wins are my wins. Hmm. And my wins are your wins. Right. And we all have a purpose here. And so you shining bright doesn't dim my light. Me shining bright doesn't dim yours. And so you want to continue to nurture those things. So you want to be, so one, you want to be active listener, want to make sure that you are doing follow-up, right? So this is, you don't have to do an everyday follow-up. You know, you can schedule a quarterly follow-up you know, with people who you're connected to that you want to build a relationship with in future, right? Mm -hmm. Also people that maybe they don't actually fit the mold for your audience, but they know other people who do. Mm. So you want to nurture that relationship because they will always remember you and refer you out to other people, right? So you also want to think about them as well. You want to show up. If you can show up to a person's live, you saw that flyer, show up, say Mm -hmm. hi, right? Make some comments, but make sure they're meaningful. Don't just give a thumbs up, right? (laughs) You know, put some thought into it, but make sure that you're continuing, you're continuing on an ongoing basis to check in with that person and to see how they're doing, see how they're doing in life, right? You know, because things happen. We're, you know, we're human. Things happen. They they can get sick or anything. And that phone call, that reach out, that checkup in the DM could mean everything. Absolutely mm. everything to them because you don't know what's going on at that moment. I love that. I love that. A few things that stuck out. One was other people's win. Your win is my win. I think that that mindset is just amazing. You know, it's the premise of what Win Hers United stands for. And I just applaud that, right? Because we need to look at other people's wins as our wins, you know, as opposed to competition, as opposed to nose in the air, you know, no jealousy, right? Because if they can, you can, right? And the fact that they are, you know, shows you that it's possible. You know, it's so many ways to look at that, right? So I love that their win is my win. My win is their win. Let's adopt this mindset. You know, this is what we are all about here at Winners United. Please, you know, if you don't think like that, challenge yourself to begin to think like that because you'll be amazed at what opens up for you by changing your mind to, to look at things in that way. Right. And we also just want to put out a a PSA, right? Every day, not every day. Trinette said, not every day. You don't want to get into the bucket of the weird person. You know, you don't want to get into the weird person bucket, you know, stalkerish. We're not promoting that. You know, (laughs) we want it to be natural. You know, we don't, we don't want it to be harassment. Right. But we do want that care to be shown. 
right? And you never know what what grows from that, you know. But but leave some space in between, right? Leave some space in between. We just want to throw that out there. Hey, I'm jumping in as I do, right? I hope you're enjoying the interview. Just wanted to let you know that I really appreciate you listening again. And I want to ask for your support. If you enjoy the content on When Hers United, the podcast that I pour my heart and soul into, I would greatly appreciate if you could support When Hers United via Cash App or Buy Me a Coffee. My Cash App handle for When Hers United is dollar sign When Hers United. That's W-I-N-H-E-R-S-U-N-I-T-E-D. And buy me a coffee. That is buymeacoffee.com forward slash Winhurst United. B-U-Y-M-E-A-C-O-F-F-E-E dot C-O-M forward slash W-I-N-H-E-R-S U-N-I-T-E-D. I greatly appreciate your support if this podcast has touched your life. Thank you. Now, let's talk mindset. All right, so now we are into our mindset segment. I'll never forget a conversation that I had with Trinette about working out, right? I was getting up in the morning. I didn't feel like working out, right? So I called Trinette and obviously I wanted to work out because I probably wanted to call Trinette. So I needed some kind of inspiration. And I said, I don't feel like it. And she said, who said you have to feel like it? I mean, I couldn't even follow up with anything after I heard that. I could come up with excuse after excuse. I could come up with reason after reason. But when she said that, it was nothing else. I think I just wanted to hang up with her, right? To be honest, it was nothing else to be said after that. So, Trinette, I feel like in business and fitness, you have to push yourself beyond what you feel like doing. So talk to us about this type of mindset and how it's beneficial for the entrepreneurial journey, as well as the fitness journey, if you want. Right, right, right. So... (laughs) (laughs) I was trying to get past that. Oh, but I remember that conversation that we had. But yes, this was very difficult for me, right? And so that's why I say, oh, okay, you know, I walk the walk and talk the talk because I struggled with being a very, a person that was reactionary Mm. and focused and made decisions around my emotions. Mm. But as I continue to grow, you know, personally and be intentional about what it is that I'm doing, I learned and began to transform the way I saw things, the way I did things. And I understood that you cannot base decisions solely on feelings because those Mm. things are finicky. Okay. Right. (laughs) And so if you're going to be successful, whether we're talking about in business or whether we're talking about in fitness, you've got to push past how you feel. That is very temporary. And like I said, it is very situational. And so in order for you to really, you know, make it to the level that you want to or to achieve whatever goals that you have set, you got to push past that because your feelings will tell you, I don't want to do that. Your feelings will tell you, I'm not good enough to do that. Your feelings will tell you nobody will buy that. Your feelings will tell you, you know, we can't, we haven't seen anyone else who is going to, your feelings will tell you all types of things. And a lot of times your feelings are speaking to you out of your own fears. Hmm. And so that's why you cannot simply stay there. You have to push past and go forward, even in the midst of all of that. You're speaking to your mind and your mind has to comply. Mm. Okay. And so you will be able to push past those feelings and make achievements step by step, bit by bit. You will achieve those goals. And as you achieve those goals, now you have what I like to talk about is proof. 
So anytime those feelings come in, trying to negate what you're doing, because it can be something in fitness like, you know, doing a bear crawl on a hill backwards, mm-hmm. right? So when you first hear, yeah, let's do this bear crawl up the hill backwards, your mind goes to who? <laughs> Not me. Look, I'm going to just let y'all know. <laughs> <laughs> your, your mind is like, oh, oh no, oh, that, that looks difficult. Oh, we can't do that, Right. And in order to push past that, you have to look in your past, right? Go to that catalog and you remember all of the exercises you've been able to do up until this point, progress that you've been able to make. And even though you may not have done an exercise like this, you've been working on your whole body. You've been working on your upper body. You've been strengthening those legs. So you have the capacity to do this exercise, even though you feel like you cannot. And that gives you the confidence and that motivation to go down there and do it. And it's the same thing in business, right? You know, maybe you've never sent your first automation email. Maybe you have never sent a proposal, you know, for a particular service. You know, maybe this is the highest number, you know, maybe you've never charged $5,000 for a program. Right. And so you're feeling these things, but you put it out there anyway. Right. Because you remember, well, I remember when I wasn't making ten dollars a day, a hundred dollars a day. I remember when I thought nobody would buy anything for two ninety seven and they did. And so because you have this proof, now you can push past how you're feeling. So absolutely. It is a mindset. That is why as a Curvy Fit RN. I am the epitome of curvy fit chicks because I am saying that in order to master myself, that means I have to continually push myself to grow and I have to always be ready to go outside of the comfort zone. I enjoy going outside of the comfort zone. I like that it's, it's, I don't know what's going to happen. And I think all great things will happen. Right. And so that's, that's the mindset. Okay. All right. So as I was listening, I heard feelings aren't facts, right? And, you know, I love that you love going outside of the comfort zone. I'm one of them people that kick and scream as I go outside of the comfort zone. I'm going to just keep it real. So if you're kicking and screaming, don't feel bad. I see you. You know, we here, we in it together, right? But I still do. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to be real, you know? Uh-huh. I still do go. Shanette could attest that I yes. can scream, right? Yes. <laughs> but I still go outside of the comfort zone, right? All the same. And it's funny because I remember that I was having a conversation with someone and I said, it feels like, like every new level, it feels like I'm busting through a brick wall, right? So, you know, like, think about that, like busting through a brick wall. That ain't going to be like, oh, let me tap it. It's going to fall down. No, no, it's some work. It's some strength. It's some things that have to occur. You know, it's some tools that you might have to get out, right? To bust through a brick wall, right? But that does not mean that it's not possible. And even though, you know, let's say the first time I might try to hit it with a plastic hammer and it don't do nothing, right? Then I got to go back and get something stronger and, you know, continue to build up my muscle and, you know, all these things. But if you keep going, you will push through, right? So love, 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 love it. Now let's talk personal development. This is our personal development segment, right? So tell us what does personal development mean to you? I equate personal development and personal growth. However, you know, I have been reading and I see that a lot of things differentiate between personal development and personal growth. But I am on the if I'm developing myself, I better be growing. Okay. I better be applying. I'm not doing these things just to say I did it, just to check it off of my, you know, sheet of paper of things that I have done. It is always about growing, stretching, and pushing myself because it's not just about me, right? It's personal development, it's personal growth. But it is for the benefit of all those that I touch, all those that are within reach and that I am destined to connect with. And so I take personal growth 
very, very seriously because I don't feel like uh, the time we have here is very finite. And so there's no time to waste. And so you must constantly be developing yourself so that you can operate in a space of being at your best, doing your best, giving your best. Okay. So we're constantly evolving. And so that's how I see uh, personal development. I love it. You know, I'm all about all kind of views, right? Because, you know, everyone is different. And what I heard from you is personal development can be reading a book, right? Uh But you, for you, if you're not implementing what you've learned in this book, then are you really developing personally, right? So not just getting the knowledge, but taking the action to implement the knowledge that has been attained. Correct. That's exactly it. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Hey, so don't, don't just consume it. Use it. Yeah. Is what I heard Trinette say. All right, Trinette. All right now. So tell us about a class, a book, or a podcast that has helped you to develop personally. Okay. The last book that I read that helped me was The Four Agreements. And this is a book by, it is a very popular book, so you may have heard it, but just in case you have not, or you just haven't picked it up yet, it is by Don Miguel Ruiz. And it's definitely a book that will take you through some introspection. It will definitely help you to really do be self-aware, learn more about yourself. And I apply these four agreements. I will remind myself, don't take it personal. Do right. not take it personal. Do not make assumptions, right? right. Uh, but those things are very, very important, especially when you're building boundaries and you are, you know, you're wanting to to serve people in order to serve people. Well, you yourself, you know, have to be in a well state of mind. And so you have to constantly be doing these things, right. And reminding yourself. And so the four agreements was the last book um, that I read. I have a slew of books, but that's the last one, but it did a really good job. Yes. Yes. Love it. Love it. I had the privilege of reading this book alongside Trinette and it is definitely a great book. One of the other agreements is to be impeccable with your word and always do your best. So going back to her talking about always doing her best and why, you know, why she looks at personal development as needing to be personal growth, right? Because you're always doing your best. So I do agree. All right. I wanted to piggyback on something. When you talked about our mindset, right? Um, Mm -hmm. Sort of like uh, the word that just came to me is mind control, right? Mind control, having control over your mind, right? So you talked about telling yourself, you know, like if you initially think, I can't do this telling yourself you can, right? And then I just also wanted to bring an opposing view to that is that sometimes you have to tell yourself stuff that you shouldn't do that your brain tells you to do, right? And that's speaking from me and, you know, those that have been listening for a while, you all know that I am a recovering addict, right? Had issues with alcohol, issues with drugs, right? Well, in recovery, You have to continue to tell yourself, no, I don't want this drink. No, I don't want this drug, right? And your mind may tell you, yes, you do. You know, so I just wanted to talk about how that goes both ways to where at times you have to tell yourself, yes, you can. But then at times you also have to tell yourself, no, I can't, right? Somebody send you a crazy text message and you want to send them a crazy text message back. No, you don't need to do that, right? So, you know, just wanted to also just touch on how, that mind control goes both ways in relation to what you should and what you should not do, right? Oh, yeah. I definitely agree with that. And I I talk about that when with discernment, okay? And as you are mastering yourself or learning more self-control, right? So you have to learn when to say yes and when to say no, because no is not a bad word. Right. Many people haven't learned how to discipline themselves and differentiate when yes is used or when no is used. But yeah, I tell myself both yes and no, you know, in the appropriate situation. But that's definitely, that's true. 
Mm-hmm. All right. And let's talk self care. So, Trinette, we know you are about everything, working out. We know it. You know, like, I feel like I need to go work out right after this call. Else you're going to look at me sideways. But I worked out this morning, y'all. So I got my check mark. But it's not about a check mark, right? I feel good. Okay. So, anywho, besides working out, what other self care regimes do you use or do you practice? Okay. So, besides working out, I just want to say this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Only because I feel that it is not said enough that working out is a major part of self care. It is. Uh, it is the only thing, one of the only things that you can do for self. And so I just I have to put that out there. But some other things that I do for self care is prayer. That is very, very important. Prayer and devotion is a priority in my life. And I look at that as self-care because it helps me to connect to my creator. And who can better tell me about myself than the one that actually created me? (laughs) So that's definitely um, what I do for self-care. I also have quiet time. Mm. So... I am not afraid of turning off all electronics and having quiet time in my house because I do a lot of things online. You know, I'm stimulated a lot with electronics and being on the phone. So I do like to have quiet time to just be to myself. I also like to just go places by myself sometimes. You know, I like to date myself. I'm a fun person. I like to chill. Chilling is a part of self-care. Yeah. That's a good list. That's a good That's list. A list. I love that. I That's love that. And they all were, you know, things that don't cost you a dime, right? Things that don't cost you a dime, but are priceless. Let's talk about that. So you can't say you can't afford self-care, right? You're just looking at self-care in a way that may be expensive, but it doesn't have to be, right? And your self-care should always be on your list. Bonus time. Let's talk celebrating when. So we are at our final segment and this is our celebrating win segment. This is something new. We should all recognize and celebrate our accomplishments, the lessons we learn, the milestones we reach, right? So that is the premise of what the celebrating win segment is about. So Trinette, tell us about your latest win and why it's important to you. Okay. So my latest when I'm so very excited about this was okay check this out I was invited into a Facebook group okay I know you over there (laughs) saying really Trinette yes really I was invited to a Facebook group okay where if you invited me to this group about three years ago I would have surely declined I would not have seen any value in being in this group okay but now I accepted the invite. I posted a couple of things in the group. One particular post, you know, you know, a lot of comments on it. And I was looking at the comments and I was just, you know, I was just smiling, right? First of all, I was like, okay, you have graduated, honey, because you're you're able to go into this group one. Two. You posted into the group. So it's not like, because you could have easily hidden in this group with thousands of people, but you decided to go ahead and post in this group. Okay. Three, you're looking at the comments and able to read them. And as we used to say, you know, chew the meat and spit out the bones, right? So what are we saying? Was it, was it some negative comments? Let's, let's give some more context. Oh, yes, of course. You know, it's people, you know, it's folks, it's folks. So there were both positive and negative comments, you know, but I was okay with there being both sides of the coin. You know, I expected that. If I didn't get that, I would have thought something was wrong. (laughs) Something is not right here. This is not circulating around the group with all these people. But yeah, I got some negative comments. There were comments that I could have easily taken out of context. But this is where, you know, your personal growth comes in. 
the book we talked about, The Four Agreements, came in because I did not take them personally. I didn't make assumptions about the people. And I was able to, I didn't even have to respond to the negative comments because there were other women in the group who were responding and they responded respectfully. And so I, I was just thrilled. I was absolutely thrilled that I could do that because I said, oh my goodness, you know, back in the day when I used to hear them say, oh, you know, you got to chew the meat and spit out the bones. I thought those people were crazy. Hmm. I, hmm. <laughs> I thought they were crazy. Wait, wait, wait. Let's explore that now. We can't be throwing out these colloquialisms. You know, we, we need to know what, chew the what, and what the what? What does that mean, Trinette? Yes, yes, yes. So you, you chew the meat and spit out the bones. So essentially that means that you are just taking what is necessary. Mm. Okay. And what you don't need, you discard. Mm. And so... Yes, the person was making a negative comment, but I appreciated the negative comments because it allowed me to see a different perspective, mm. understand where other people are coming from and uh, how they feel about it, right? So even as a business owner, it allows me to see other viewpoints, which is really good because when you are posting content, you want to know what are some of the things or hurdles or obstacles that people have to buying your product? Why would they not buy your product? Because sometimes you post things and you're trying to figure out why didn't they buy? Like this, right. see, this makes sense, <laughs> right? <laughs> to <I> you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but they're not buying it. I don't understand. Right, right. And so this, you know, this tells you why that is or some possible reasons. So you can build content around those things that attack those head on. Mm. So I was just like, oh my goodness. I was so proud of myself. Yes, congratulations. So Look, we not even have to add a clap um, sound effect. Congratulations, right? That made me think of if it doesn't apply, let it fly, right? So, you know, that's the same as chew the meat and spit out the bones. Right. For those like me that sometimes need a, you know, second interpretation. I love that. Congratulations. Right. I think it also goes back to the emotions that you were speaking of earlier. Right. Take the emotions out of it. You know, everything isn't about you. And like you said, the four agreements, don't take it personal. Don't take that. Don't take it personal. Chapter will have you really live in life free. Right. Because what other people say, do to you, about you, or even in general has nothing, nothing to do with you. Right. And when you realize that and move like that and view the world like that, you experience a freedom that is truly, truly priceless. Yes. Winning. Winning. All right, Trinette. So speaking of winning. Tell us what being a winner means to you. Being a winner. I think of a winner. I think of a Curry Fit Chick as a winner, right? Because that means that you are continuing to strive. You're continuing to pursue. You're continually progressing. You're continually open for the challenge. You're continuing fighting through each level of doubt, each level of fear, each level of imposter syndrome, that means that you are facing things head on, right? That means you're able to celebrate yourself as well as to celebrate others, right? That means that you are continuing to grow. That means that you are not only flourishing, but it means that you're also planting seeds in other gardens so that mm. they too can grow and flourish and stay nourished. And so that's what I think about when I hear the word, when her, this, this is a woman that I want to be around. I am her, she is me. All right, 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 right. And that made me think of the warrior that you spoke about in the beginning as well, right? I love the word warrior. I think it's so powerful, right? So let's just make when her also synonymous with warrior. 
All right, Shanette, I feel like this time goes by super, super fast. Before we get into you letting the listeners know where they can find you, connect with you, and listen, Shanette going to connect back now and let y'all know that now, right? <laughs> so tell us, do you have any parting words or parting advice for us? So I just want to remind you all, because I know if you are listening to this podcast, that you definitely are a winner and you're always looking to be better. I want you to always invest in yourself. I want you to continue to put in the work. Okay. Put in that work. Be diligent and disciplined in your workouts as much as you are to work. Okay, as much as you are to your dream, as much as you are to your business, as much as you are to your careers, do not fail your body. You Mm. get one appreciated. Mm. Let it, you know, give you the ability to continue to fulfill your purpose and your mission in life so that you can keep winning. Because one thing I know about you is that you're not winning just for yourself. You're winning for those women who didn't have the opportunity. You're winning for those little girls who are watching you right now. You're winning for your colleagues that still have not said the words that they believe in themselves, Mm. right? So I want you to continue to take this as seriously as I do and understand that you are purposed to be here and that it is your obligation It is your obligation to be a good steward to your body as well as your business so that you can continue to impact the world and continue to be a winner. All right. Look, I got chills. So where can we find you, Trinette? You can find me over Facebook. My personal page is Trinette Larba. My business page is Curvy Fit Chicks. You can find me on Instagram at curvy underscore fit underscore chicks. I'm also on YouTube. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Clubhouse at Curvy Fit Chicks. I also have a club on Clubhouse called Curvy Fit Chicks. So make sure that you are following me there. If you forget everything that I've said, feel free to go to my website, curvyfitchicks.com or to my link tree link. And that way you'll know what's going on, all the different things that will be rolling out because we have upcoming apparel and I'm putting in this shameless plug, okay? Because win hers have to be warriors and a warrior trains, okay? She, Because you know why? She stays ready, so she don't have to get ready, okay? So we have fitness apparel that will be rolling out. We're taking pre-orders this month so make sure that you are following us so you can get that link and go ahead and get your curvy fit chicks apparel all right all right and all of those links will also be in the show notes under trinette's episode so be sure to support 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 i can't wait to get my shirt natural booties matter right so um just to let you know that's one of the shirts and i'm excited because that's how i feel about mine but uh, thank you, Trinette, so much. I enjoyed it. All of the knowledge, all of the laughter, all of the all of the things, as Trinette says. I enjoyed this interview with Trinette, and I hope you did too. One of the true blessings of starting this podcast has been being able to connect with and get to know other amazing women, those that have been guests and those that are listeners. So like Trinette did, don't be shy to jump in my DMs, to send me an email, to reach out however you please, because I really want to hear from you and I want to get to know you as well. My email is winhersunited at gmail.com and that's W-I-N-H-E-R-S-U-N-I-T-E-D at gmail.com. Don't forget to check out the show notes for this episode to read Trinette's full bio, to get the Cash App handle for Winners United if you want to support, to get the direct link to my Buy Me A Coffee page if you want to support via Buy Me A Coffee, and much more. We'll be back next week for another amazing, winning woman of color entrepreneur. But until then, as always, be empowered and empower on.